Eucalyptus oil is produced by extracting it from the leaves of various eucalypt species. Incredibly though, in this industry, Australia is not competitive. That's because countries like China and Brazil have enormous plantations of eucalyptus, mostly for wood pulp production, but they also produce a lot of lower grade eucalyptus oil. We can't compete with them on quantity, but we can compete on quality. Local species, the blue oil mallee, produces the highest quality eucalyptus oil you can get. But can we also improve the amount of oil, the yield, that we can get from oil mallee plantations? The traditional answer is yes, of course, just use selective breeding. We all know how it works. It's been done for thousands of years. You take one plant that looks like it has bigger and juicier fruit than average, and another plant that looks like it is more drought tolerant than average, and you cross them together, and you hope that the next generation is better than the previous one. While this does work, it can take a long, long time, and it can be a bit hit and miss. What I would like to do is look under the hood of the blue oil mallee plant and see how its genetics can help us breed a better oil mallee plantation. It starts, of course, with DNA. In DNA over time, small changes occur known as mutations. And it's these mutations that drive the variation that you see between different individuals within the same species. It's variation in traits such as growth rate, height, leafiness, and the amount of oil you get in a leaf. I would like to figure out which of these mutations are responsible for which of these traits and by how much. To do this, I'm taking 480 blue oil mallee plants. I'm assessing which ones have the really good traits for a lot of oil yield. That is, they have a lot of oil per leaf, they have a lot of leaves, and they can survive adverse conditions. And I'm also assessing which of those plants don't have those good traits. I'm then going to sequence the entire DNA, that is the whole genome of all 480 plants, and look for the mutations within the DNA and see which of those mutations seem to occur all the time in that really good group for oil yield. I can then highlight those mutations and mark them down on what's known as a genetic marker map. This is essentially the optimal genetics for a blue oil mallee plant to have really good oil yield. Armed with this map, a breeder can assess from a pool of potential parent plants which ones to breed together. Simply by looking at the DNA of each potential parent and seeing which ones correspond closest with the optimal marker map. The result being that the next generation has the highest gain in oil yield possible and Australia becomes more competitive in an industry in which it really should be.